lovelies. Happy Friday and welcome to our final story of the week. Now this one is not actually strictly Goldilocks and the Three Bears, although some of those characters will feature in the story. I thought this would be a lovely book to end the week on because it will have in it some characters that we're going to be meeting in future weeks with the books we'll be looking at in this topic. This is called The Great Fairy Tale Disaster and I hope you absolutely love it. Have an amazing weekend and I will see you on Monday. Bye. The Great Fairy Tale Disaster. Once upon a time, there lived an old big bad wolf. He no longer had any huff or puff to blow down the three little pigs' houses, and he'd had enough of falling into hot water. What I need, the wolf thought to himself, is a nice relaxing fairy tale for a change. So he scampered off into the pages of the fairy tale book to find one. Cinderella was busy sweeping and hadn't noticed the wolf's dark shadow appear in the doorway. I want to be in your tail, he growled. Of course, stammered a frightened Cinderella. Take my place. Just then the fairy godmother arrived. I know you'd love to go to the ball, she said to the wolf, and so you shall. There was a flick of a wand and a burst of light. Wolves don't wear dresses, cried the wolf, hobbling off in glass slippers to find a different tail. Soon after, the big bad wolf crept up behind Jack on the magic beanstalk. Jack trembled as he let the wolf into his fairy tale. The big bad wolf was climbing up the beanstalk when he saw two huge feet and heard a horrible giant voice bawling, Fee, fi, fo, fum. This tale's too scary, cried the wolf as he slid back down the beanstalk to find another one. Then the big bad wolf found Sleeping Beauty snoring softly in her bed. Wakey, wakey, he snarled, out you get. There the big bad wolf lay so beautiful that the prince could not turn his eyes away. He knelt down and gave the wolf a big kiss. Yuck! spluttered the big bad wolf. I hate being kissed. So he dashed away to try his luck elsewhere. The, the big bad wolf ran into the three bears empty cottage in the forest. He opened the door and stepped into the tail. Yum, he said, porridge, my favourite. The big bowl of porridge was too hot. The second bowl was too cold. But the littlest bowl was just right, so the wolf ate it all up. This is the life, said the wolf as he sat down in the big comfy chair. Suddenly, the door opened and in stormed the three bears. Where's Goldilocks? demanded Daddy Bear. What are you doing in our fairy tale? scowled Mummy Bear. Oh, where's my porridge? cried Baby Bear. The wolf made a dash for it, but the three bears chased after him into the next fairy tale. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your long hair, called the prince. And then the next. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge, roared the troll. I'll eat you for breakfast. And before you could say, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? There was chaos and confusion everywhere. The princess didn't kiss the frog, but she did kiss a billy goat gruff. Hansel and Gretel pushed Prince Charming into an oven and Puss in Boots pricked his paw on a spindle and fell asleep for a hundred years. What a mess, cried the big bad wolf, and he escaped back through the pages of the book to the three little pigs. Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in, huffed the big bad wolf. No, 
Not by the hair of our chinny chin chin, said the little pigs. We will not let you in. But the wolf had already clambered up onto the roof and he was coming down the chimney only to land splash in a pot of hot water. Oh, not again, cried the wolf. And that was the end of the fairy tale troubles. <laughs>